So we set our intentions and I want to share my intention with you, but the medicine always has different plans. Your intentions will always be met, but it may be in a different way than you anticipate. And so it's interesting that in the shamanistic view, the medicine is viewed as an entity, like almost as a person. And for most people, it's experienced as a woman or a grandmother, that sort of energy that can be strong and powerful, but can be loving and hold to you. Um, I experience so many of those things. So, so we go up um, two by two and take about a shot glass full of what looked, okay, get ready. Um, because I've collected my moon, which is my cycle, and I've returned it back to the earth, um, it kind of looked like that. It was this dark, thick, um, maybe more molasses-like than actual blood, but it was this dark, thick um, liquid. And when I drank it, I expected it to be like the worst thing I've ever had, and I'm sure there's different brews all different places. Um, but this tasted to me like a really tart super fruit, super food. So like, I don't know, like how it's kind of hard to get really 100% cranberry juice down or like goji berry juice down. Um, it's good in small doses or diluted, but it was strong medicine. So I took it and went back to my mat. And at first we were just quiet and it's interesting that whistling is used um, to sort of activate the... The medicine. Maybe I'll post a little clip about that too. So there was some, maybe something like that, probably better than that, but some whistling happened and then the music started and the music was incredible. Incredible. And so I'm not sure how much time passed. It's kind of hard to tell, maybe 30 minutes, but I do remember that one of the musicians was closer in the middle when the medicine really hit. Um, you know, at first you do have those voices that are like, it's not going to work, it's not working, what's going on? But there really wasn't a ton of mind chatter. I tried to just stay with my breath and be in the moment. And as soon as the, the medicine hit, it's like this intelligence is scanning your body. And the first thing I thought of, or really felt deeply, was that in this realm and with this medicine, it just desires to play with you any way that you want. At least for me, that's how it felt. And so I decided to go with that. And, you know, that's when, you know, your vision, you start to be, you start to realize that you're a multidimensional being and you drop all of the um, sort of preset conditioning that has you see life in a certain way. And that includes visually. So like, you know, People call them hallucinations, but what it felt like for me was just realizing that we exist in all these dimensions at once. And maybe it's a gift to not have to be able to focus on all of them at once because um, things just started to be more fluid than solid. So like colors were morphing and people's faces were turning. And whether or not you, you I mean, some, some people could use the word like demonic because we've been fed so many images um, for a reason, um, yeah, to keep us from things. But anyway, so I immediately, um, I kind of wanted to lay down, but I tried to stay up and sit with my breath. Um, and it was like, I was experiencing my body for the first time. I just remember like it was dark, but I was making these faces. I was just like lips, face, what's happening. And, um, the way the medicine wanted to play with me, I, I felt this little voice. It was this inner voice that was like, are you going to stay small? How long are you going to stay small? And it wasn't like, it was a voice, my higher self, ayahuasca, whatever, that I knew cared for me. It wasn't a voice that just wanted to like push me out there and then leave me scared and alone. Um, but it was a voice that was very firm and authoritative asking me how long that I was going to do that. And I said, I'm not, you know, I'm not. And then, you know, it was, I felt okay. So the music was already like the drum beat was hitting. And all I wanted to do was get up and dance. And something was like, if you play big, you're going to give someone else permission to really not hold this experience at bay. 
And that is definitely possible. I've seen it. I've seen someone drink five cups and nothing, nothing happened. So our, our personal disposition and our belief is a huge thing. Um, but I blasted way off <laughs> and I'll get to that soon. So I'm, there's these periods where the music was just so perfectly timed. And I started to realize on a deep cellular level that you never die. And I felt like a seed or like Mama Ayahuasca was dancing me. So like there would be these periods of what I can only say is like I'm in this cocoon and it's black and it's dark. And I'm not sure how much life is there. You know, I don't know where I went in those moments. But suddenly the music would come back in and I would like be danced by ayahuasca. It felt like a ceremony. It felt like, oh, I'm getting chills again. Um, it felt like... Well, I've been rediscovering my love for a symphony, so it's perfect that it was sort of in this way, but it felt like the crowd goes crazy when there's a crescendo and it gets kind of like, you know, maybe even a little dissonant and a lot of things are happening or when it's really, really quiet. And so I felt like simultaneously like I was being danced and I was the seed that was awakening and remembering its power. Oh my God, it was so powerful. It was like... Everything that I thought is real. It was like this like most visceral feeling. And so I could feel my body sort of moving and I couldn't stop it. It was like later on I found out I was like kicking and like, you know, dancing. Um, okay, so this is where it gets nonlinear. It's like suddenly I knew that I could play with energy any way that I wanted. And so I would like speed up the music or, you know, it's speed it up and it would go fast and I would slow it way down. And I just thought, I'm going to follow any thread that feels beautiful. So I was like zipping over to this part of the cosmos and I was hanging out with my mom. And then I was like remembering that I was timeless and I was a seed and I was being danced. And then suddenly it was like, just like so much respect for moms that have given birth and like in other lives, I, had, you know, I felt myself giving birth and, um, I didn't purge. It was interesting. The only, I felt like what I purged was old ideas about myself. And so some things had to be verbal. Um, and also when anyone else purged, it was like you were able to send them love and energy because they were purging for the whole. And it was almost this like beautiful symphony of like, like throwing up here and there and, or laughter or whatever. It was so human and so raw and so beautiful. And I think we miss that. You know, we, we try to be so sanitary and like everything white and perfect and life is messy. And at least for me, I started to appreciate that a hundredfold more. Okay. So anyway, I'm I'm rebirthing myself and I'm having all this respect for the mother and the feminine and I feel hands on me and it's like, Aisha, you can do it. You can do it. I don't know if that was, okay, I know there were hands on me because there was times where the people who were guiding the ceremony would come over and give you suggestions and it's like I almost embodied this like very childlike nature where I knew what was best for me and the teacher didn't. There was one girl especially who felt like the teacher because she would like tap me on my shoulder. Maybe I was laying down. Maybe I was dancing. Maybe I was being danced. Maybe I was the seed. I don't know. But she would tap me. I remember this and came over and I looked at her and her face was like nothing. Blurry. Um, I knew who she was. Didn't feel scared. Um, definitely, okay, won't get into that. But anyway... So she's asking me, maybe try sitting up. And I, I sit up for a minute and then I'm like, no. I think I stuck my tongue at her. So, you know, just being like a little sassy. Like I wanted to play with the energy. I wanted to be a kid. I wanted to go where I needed to go. And I just let myself. Um, and so because of that, there's a large chunk of time I can't account for. Um, and later I told, was told I went totally out of my body. But I think it was when I felt I was giving birth and I felt that they were the doulas. And the music, again, the music was just so heartbreakingly beautiful. The strumming of the guitar and, and the drums, and it always brought me back to this knowing. It doesn't stop. And also that there's like all of these other um, races of people and just people that are totally rooting for us to get it, you know, to remember. I felt that so deeply. I felt no judgment for any path that anyone's ever taken. I thought because of... 
some of my realizations about um, the, our origin stories and how we haven't been told much of that. Um, you know, that I was going to have to encounter all this darkness and this blackness. And I think part of the reason that I didn't have to do it there is because I've been committed to doing it IRL, you know, like in real life, in this vibration, without the aid of the plant, I've been willing to look at the darker, shadowy side of myself, of what's going on out there, and I'm going to talk more about that. I've just been sort of getting my footing with it, so give me some time. Okay, so I'm rebirthing myself, and something was like, if you have the courage to say what everyone's thinking, you'll set yourself free and them, and so like... You know, whenever I started to feel sick, like I might need to purge, I just went with it, you know? Like, I, I just remember saying, maybe out loud in my head, probably out loud, you know, oh, I feel sick. Oh, this isn't, you know, oh, you know, like really leaning into the, like, core of the pain. And um, also being silly and being like, what if I just said fart right now? Or like, what if I, like, whatever, you know? It just, there was this humor and this playfulness and this lightness about it that was so wonderful. Um, okay, so I'm being rebirthed, right? I feel these hands on me. At this point, I'm pretty sure because I was told later that they were asking me to be in kind of a separate space, but that was close by because my experience was so, so lively, so visceral. And I remember in the beginning, teacher who would come and tap me, she was sitting across from me and she said, if your journey starts to... I don't know the words she used, but they were beautiful. Become whatever. We might ask you to be in a different space so as not to impede on anyone else's journey. I do remember kind of like like my neighbor. I'd be like, hey, neighbor, and I'd poke her, you know? <laughs> and later on, she was fine with it. She, she was having her own journey. Um, so, yes, I'm being rebirthed. There's hands on me. I feel people helping me. That's what it felt like. They were taking me to the other room. It took four of them because I guess I didn't want to go. You know, I'm like giving birth. I'm like, don't move me. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Um, and apparently I kind of tussled with um, <laughs> the main, um, bless his heart. Yeah. Um, I'm sure he's seen everything in his 20 years of doing this. But I didn't want to go. And I remember at some point feeling like, okay, I've surrendered to this. I was in a different space. I could see not everybody, but like a small piece. And I just thought because of my perception and where I was that I had zoomed out on them and I was like still in the same space, but it's just my perception. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to zoom in. And not a whole lot happened. <laughs> um, and then I started to realize that I was in a different space, but the music, like, I think it was Stevie Wonder at this point, And it really helped cement my love for Stevie's music and really the mind frame he must have been in when he wrote The Secret Life of Plants or the song As, which is what we ended our ceremony with. And I just never have felt that music was so beautiful or well-timed or um, uh, just so meaty and meaningful, you know? And Stevie's song As, oh... Anytime I hear it now, I'm immediately transported back. I have to get up and get my life. I get goosebumps. I just remember those feelings that I had that evening. Um, and so fast forward to the next day. I was speaking to a few people because I had sort of lost time. And I went up to someone and just said, hey, I'm so glad you're here because... You being here buffs a miss for me about who is open to this. You know, like, you've helped me just, like, rewire my brain, really. And then we got to talking and kind of bonded. And he was like, you know, I wanted to be you last night. You really went there. And I heard that over and over again. And that was sort of what my soul was urging me to do. The medicine was urging me to do. The mother was urging me to do. In this space and in real life is, like... You've got everything you need. When are you going to stop playing small? And I decided that over the weekend, which was really beautiful. And so my first night with ayahuasca was this dance, this dance of life, this dance of remembering, this dance of rebirthing, this dance of playing. And it was perfect for me. 